Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. As my brother Muhammad Naik introduced the topic Islam the misunderstood religion. In fact, it was the topic which was the title of a book uh, written by Muhammad Kutub which influenced me to become a Muslim uh, some 20 odd years ago. At that time, the book addressed not necessarily the same topics that I will be addressing, but it served the same purpose in terms of clarification of common misunderstandings with regards to Islam. From mostly a political perspective, because at the time when I accepted Islam, I was a communist after having left Christianity for communism. So it clarified for me from a political perspective uh, why Islam was the most effective system or had with it the best principles for the running of human society and for the protection of the rights of individuals and the creatures on the earth. My talk is focused more from a general misunderstanding held around the world with regards to Islam. And that misunderstanding could be traced back to two major sources. If we assume that the world media, for the most part, originates in the West. When we look at the various news reports, it's by AP, Associated Press, Reuters, all these press agencies, the vast majority of them, are Western-based. And as such, they influence the media all over the world today. We have to understand that the misconceptions which are prevalent in the media today are a result of either one or another factors, of two factors. The one or the first would be that of deliberate misinformation. And that is a product of the Crusaders uh, period in which they encountered Muslims, this is where Christianity in Europe encountered Islam uh, under the heading of the Crusades where they sought to liberate, as they saw it, uh, the Holy Land from the Muslim infidels. In order to generate support for this crusade, there were large amounts of false information disseminated about Islam in order to encourage these people to go and fight, give up their lives to occupy this particular land. Of course, historians since then you know, have pointed out that the reasons behind it were to a large degree economic and not religious at all. It had to do with the trade which was coming from the Far East, uh, trade in spices, trade in uh, silk, etc that the Muslims were the middlemen and they wanted to remove the middlemen. But it was given this overtone of religious uh, struggle in order to motivate the masses to support this uh, crusade. And we could say today's misinformation, deliberate misinformation, is a part of that. It's an extension of it. Or we could say it is a hangover from the period of the Crusaders. Uh, what came out of that period, during the period of uh, colonial expansion over the Muslim world, as well as the rest of the world, is a tradition of study known as Orientalism in the West. Orientalism meaning they specialized in Eastern things, Eastern religions, etc. It included others, but focused to a large degree on Islam because they represented the largest group. And it was missionary based. It was, uh, the, there were systems of study set up in order 
to penetrate the areas under Muslim control, to penetrate these areas psychologically, intellectually. So they made a study of uh, Islamic texts, etc., to try to find opportunities or avenues by which they could confuse the people, create doubts in the peoples about their religion in order to uh, support their own political control over those given areas. As a result, uh, the Orientalist tradition is filled with many lies, things which are outright lies about Islam. Unfortunately, the approach was not one of discussion and debate where you sit down and present what your beliefs are and I will present what my beliefs are, but it was an attack. And as such, unfortunately, that attack was an unscrupulous attack in which they sought to malign Islam in any way, shape, or form possible. So many lies, I mean, many things are attributed to Islam, which even the smallest child, if you ask the child, you know, is this a part of Islam? They will tell you, no, no, it has nothing to do with Islam. Islam doesn't say this. The smallest child can give the correct answer. So we cannot excuse, you know, scholars, PhDs, you know, of Europe, etc., who studied Islamic texts. They learned Arabic to the point where they've understood the Quran, they understood the Islamic the text, books of fiqh, etc., that they're going to make fundamental mistakes on certain very basic things which each and every Muslim knows. This represents the deliberate element in misinformation. Now there is another element of misinformation which I call the inadvertent element. And that is due to misinterpretations where people observe Muslims doing something and then they judge it according to their own uh, cultural or uh, social or religious backgrounds. They interpret it from that point of view. Just as a simple interpretation, for example, uh, if Muslims uh, are seen to bow towards the Kaaba in India, for example, then Hindus who bow to their idols will look at this and try to interpret it in the same light. Well, you know, Muslims are bound to the Kaaba as we bow to our idols, you know. This is not necessarily a thing of worship, but it is a means through which God is worshipped. I mean, this is how it is interpreted. So they interpret it in that line. <laughs> The human heart, greed, exploitation, hatred, all diseases of the heart. For the cure, join Huda TV every Sunday at 20 GMT for Moments for the Heart. Or, for example, uh, Muslims uh, slaughtering of animals. That uh, in Christian tradition, the slaughter was sacrificial for the removal of sin uh, in Christian tradition. So when they look at Muslims slaughtering on Eid al-Adha, they try to interpret it in the same light. Uh, that is one legitimate uh, mis source of misinformation which uh, we cannot blame people for. It is understandable. It's only for us to try as Muslims to clarify to them that it is not as they perceive it. The other source is one of uh, a lack of information where people don't have information about what Muslims are doing and they form interpretations or form uh, ideas about Muslims and their practice based on a lack of information. The other aspect of inadvertent misinformation 
is from the practice of Muslims themselves. Where Muslims, in their own ignorance of Islamic teachings, then involve themselves in practices which are incorrect, which are recognized internationally as being incorrect, and as such, people of other ethnic backgrounds, religious backgrounds, then judge Islam based on the practice of Muslims. Again, this we cannot blame others because it is natural for people to judge a religion based on the practice of the people. You know, if it is common practice amongst these people to do this or to do that, then to say this is from the religion is reasonable and logical, though it may not be the case. So, in this area, I mean, we Muslims ourselves are to blame for this portion of misinformation. And the best that we can do is to clarify for them that Islam is not what Muslims do, but what Muslims are supposed to do. And then we clarify to them what in fact are the actual teachings of Islam. Now, what I intend to do this morning is just to look at some of the major areas of misinformation or misinterpretation, misunderstanding with regards to Islam. And I will divide them into three basic areas. One of beliefs, one of religious practices, and the third of social practices. Now, with regards to religious beliefs, the central pillar of Islamic belief is in one God, Allah. And it has been perceived by others that this God is a personal God of Muslims. As when we read in the scriptures about Jehovah of the Jews, he is the personal God of the Jews. From an Islamic perspective, of course, this is not the case. Allah is the God of creation. He is the creator, sustainer of the whole universe, all that exists. And he is the same God who is found in all religions. However, the view of that one God, because the vast majorities of religions in the world do believe in one God, irrespective of what their followers may practice uh, today. If we search back to the origin of their beliefs, or we sift away the intermediaries, we will find a belief in one God, whether you're in uh, South Africa, whether you're in Korea, whether you're in uh, India here, or any other part of the world, the general belief of all peoples is in one God. The difference from an Islamic perspective, not that that one God is a special God of Muslims, but that that one God is unique. Unique, when we speak of the oneness of God, we don't mean oneness in the sense of he is one, this glass of water is one, because this is one glass of water, but there's another glass of water over there. There's no uniqueness in that oneness. When we speak of Allah, God as being one, we are speaking about a unique oneness, meaning that whatever attributes God has, they are unique to himself that these attributes are not shared by his creation in their completeness, in their perfection. Human beings love, God loves. Human beings see, God sees. But the seeing of human beings is not as God sees. God's seeing is infinite. The past, the present, the future, what is hidden, what is open, whereas human beings are limited to understanding the present. 
with limited information about the past, virtually no information about the future, and what is hidden from them, they cannot perceive. This is human 